What is up, guys? Am I 13 here? We are playing, uh, Doki Doki Exit Music. Weird, because you actually can't really get the game anymore. And, uh, well, I did have a little help from a subscriber who hooked me up with the, uh, files. Which is, uh, his name is Awesome Gamer, which... Now he's called a little squiddy. But I'll put his uh like picture of the name or whatever somewhere on this screen. But yeah, he hooked me up with the uh, Doki Doki Exit Music because I mentioned how I wanted to do Doki Doki Exit Music. But it seemed like you couldn't get the files anymore, which luckily he still had the files from uh, Google Drive, which uh, he happily lent to me, which he happily uh, gave me the files for. So big thanks to you because I've heard a lot about Doki Doki Exit Music for quite a while, ever since uh, ever since I uh, finished playing the f actual legit game of the, of the legit uh, game. Uh, so yeah, it's a big thanks to you, dude. Was it for you? I wouldn't be able to play this one. Cause now I can see what's so good about this mod that has been made so popular. And this that music was sick, though. Uh, that was some good shit. Probably copyright, but you know, because uh, if people aren't aware, you can't download this mod because. Uh, because of copyrights. There's copyright backgrounds or something. I think copyright music. So, yeah. But, I'll play it anyway. <laughs> Alright, let's get this started. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be one where I'm be walking into school with Siori. She better not die, I swear to God. If this mod starts off with Sayori dying, my poor cinnamon bun, I'm gonna stop playing this mod. I'm gonna stop. I, I can't take it. I will not look at this again. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her to help her wake up. This is like the same as the original game, these dialogues. And the simple gesture of walking to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as always ever been. Uh, I think he's... I guess he said, uh... I guess he said you, you'll you always be my dearest friend instead of saying I love you. Yeah. Uh, oh. In case people never heard of this mod before, this mod is solely based on Natsuki. So, yeah. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. The hell with it. I'll go get her. <laughs> I grab the cupcakes that Suki and I made yesterday and make my way to Sayori's. Oh, God, please don't. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, so she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Yeah, it's like the same. She really has a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. <clears throat> God. Please tell me she's... Like, really gonna be still alive. Please, don't do this to Sayori. Waking her up in her own house, isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Is it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Sayori... Oh, thank God. Thank you, God. You didn't kill her. Thank you. Re. <laughs> Mikey? Sayori stands up at the front of her bed. A long rope in her hand. Oh, she was going to do it. Oh, no. It's tied into a hangman's noose. Oh, no, dude. In the shock of the moment, I release my grip on the cupcakes. What the fuck? 
It's it's not what it like hell it's not what it looks like. I I'm so sorry, Mikey. I can't believe this. Sayori wouldn't do something like this. Jesus, Sayori. I should have known it was this bad. Sayori drops the noose to the floor. Sayori, why haven't you talked to anybody about this? <clears throat> I I don't want to waste people's time. You're not wasting anybody's time. We all just want you to be happy, like you've made us. You you really deserve to be happy. I know you don't like that now, but... Well, it's the truth. And I'm determined to help you every step of the way. But to start, you need to talk about this. I... I can't. I just... There's a short pause. All this silent, aside from Sayori sobbing. It's already getting to some deep shit. I... I was about to do it, Mikey. I'd have never seen you again. Sayori, could you... Could you imagine if I'd... Found you like that? You kind of did. I... 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 Sayori, listen. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You'll always have a reason to stay with us. Even if there's only one thing worth living for living for to you, then you need to hold on to it. That, my bad. And I know there is. You told me yourself yesterday. Oh, him. Mikey. She releases her grip on my back, on me, and backs away. We know it'll be tough, it'll be tough, but I'll be there for you. We all will, no matter what. Mikey, don't. Now listen to me. You need to talk to some, somebody professional about this. I'm not taking no for an answer, Sayori. I don't think I'm ready. <clears throat> we can go another time. Not a chance. You seriously need professional help as soon as possible. We're leaving now. I don't. I don't know if I can. Sayori, do it. For me, if not for yourself. She sniffles, wiping her face with her sleeve. Okay. Come on, let's go. To the doctors. We'll take the bus. Mikey? The festival? Screw the festival. You're more important to me than that. Well... I need to get changed first. Oh, of course. I nod and take a step outside the door, reaching down to pick up the rope first. Oh, thank you. I was going to say, you didn't even pick up the rope that she dropped? Taking it just in, taking it with me just in case. She gently nods, shutting the door in my face. I swear to God, she has like a backup. I'm a little anxious, leaving her alone right after something like this. Regardless, she needs her privacy. I kneel down, beginning to clean up the cupcake massacre, littering the floor with a towel. Natsuki's gonna kill me. I return downstairs and untie the noose, dropping the loose rope into the trash. I linger downstairs for a minute or two before heading back upstairs. She's probably ready by now. I knock on Sayori's door and she answers. Ready? Sayori nods once, her eyes glued to the floor. This is what's best for me, right? She stares at me, expected of an answer. I feel uneasy, but an answer anyway. I know it is. Come on now, let's get going. Ooh, it's dark. I'm sitting down in the waiting room outside of the doctor's office, patiently waiting for Sayori to return. I'm anxious. My phone buzzes quietly. I remember that today was supposed to be the day of the festival. The text is from Monica. Where are you? It's a text, so not seeing her voice. I have to reply. I'm busy. Really, Mikey, please don't tell me you've got cold feet about the poems or something. It's a bit more serious than that. What's going on? I don't know if I could tell you right now. 
but it's serious, okay? You gotta believe me. Fine. Just hurry and bring Sayori with you. God damn it. I look up at the door. Through the small window, I could see Sayori breaking down in her chair, her head resting on the doctor's desk. I feel terrible knowing that I let her reach such a point due to my own ne negligence. <laughs> Behind me, the door that leads from the entrance to my waiting room swings open and a couple of nurses walk by. But my phone buzzes again in my hand and I turn my attention back to it. It's just me and Yuri here, damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Wait, so where's Natsuki? And Monica's just getting pissed. Why? Where's Natsuki? I don't know. Please get here quick and bring Sayori, okay? Fuck's sake. It's a personal issue. I can't promise anything, but I'll try to get to the festival before it's over, okay? Okay. A couple of minutes of idle waiting pass before I get another message from her. Forget it. Everyone's here already and they're waiting. We have to cancel. Shit. I return the phone to my pocket, running my hands through my hair. Why now? I feel terrible for Sayori. The fact that she's in such pain right now and how oblivious I was to all of it. But on the other hand, I also feel like I put Monica and Yuri on the spot in front of all of her class uh, classmates. Monica and Yuri. That reminds me of something that Monica told me. Where's Natsuki? Suddenly the door to the waiting room opens again and another nurse walks by. However, she's accompanied by somebody familiar. Oh my lords! Oh no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me what I think it is. Oh, God. Oh, no. I think we all know what that is. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of the people that have seen this probably have seen this mod already. This mod's been out since, like, what, 2017? Uh, that's... Yikes. Natsuki, are you okay? Okay, bye. Couldn't even check up on her. Like, fuck. She quickly turns and runs back the way she came, exiting the hospital in tears. <sighs> fuck. We're already in so much deep shit. I don't even think it's been like 10 minutes yet into this damn bot. There's already so much going on. I jump out of my seat to speak to her, but I notice the nurse staring at me suspiciously. I take a seat once more, anxious about now about Natsuki's well-being as well as Sayori's. Uh, excuse me. What happened to her? She explains how Natsuki wandered into the hospital, bloody and bruised, looking for help. Poor Natsuki. She then cautiously asks if I had anything to do with Natsuki's injuries. Christ, no! I don't even know what's going on. I had to bring my friend here. She tried to... <sighs> should stop right there, sir. I stopped myself. I doubt Sayori would want me to talk about her struggles so openly. Not now, anyway. Well, listen, it's serious, okay? I bite my lip as the nurse continues on her way. My phone buzzes again. Are you sure you don't know where Sayori or Natsuki are? Uh, well, I do, I do know where both of them are now. I already told you I don't know. I can't tell her about Natsuki either. Chances are it's her own personal issue and she deal with it in her own way. Still, maybe I should text her. It doesn't matter anyway. We have to cancel our performance. People are complaining about the cupcakes not being here. Yuri's gone for some fresh air. Jesus, I'm sorry, okay? My hands are tied here. I can't do anything to help right now. Okay, whatever. Wow, okay, Monica. So, literally like 10 to 15 minutes into this mod, and uh, you're already a bitch. 
Thanks a lot, Mikey. Uh, yep, you're a bitch, all right. Yep, you, you are seriously a bitch. All right. Great. So much for that. Looks like uh, it's going to be the other way around. It looks like Monica's going to be the cunt in this mod. <laughs> I sigh. Now I've pissed Monica off because I couldn't bring myself to tell her what happened. I decided to text Natsuki quickly about what I just saw. A couple of minutes passed with no response. The message doesn't even mark as read. The office door swings open and Siori emerges. Mikey, are you okay? Not really, I'm just stressed out. How are you? I... I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure? Because I'm here for you, I can just... Mikey, please. Can we just drop this? I just don't want to make a big deal out of it. Especially in front of the other club members. I stand up. Sayori, I don't think you understand how big of a deal this really is. You nearly... F you nearly killed yourself. <laughs> I think you should go home and rest for a couple of days, okay? I guess I'll have to, right? <laughs> Sayori lets out a small pout. Wait, bout? Okay, I guess it's bout. Small bout of almost nervous laughter. It's a good idea, at least. You know that. But what about the festival? <sighs> Shit, dude. I hesitate. I don't want Sayori to feel like it's our fault that the performance was cancelled. So I decided to start with Natsuki's absence. Well, Natsuki didn't actually show up either. Monica had to cancel the performance, unfortunately. You didn't... You didn't tell her, did you? About... I didn't. Unless you want to talk to her about it, but... Well, talk about it yourself, she won't know. Okay. Sayori nods. I think I'll tell her. So she knows why. Why her why her plans for the festival were ruined. I can tell what she's going to say. It wasn't your fault, Sayori. None of this is. Sayori grabs my hand tightly, crushing it in a vice-like grip. You can talk to her if you really want to. Hell, she'd probably be able to give better advice than me. Maybe. Did you... Tell my parents? I sigh. <sighs> I did, yeah. I'm sorry, though. I felt like I had to, Ann. Thanks. I was scared I'd have to tell them myself. Sayori glances downwards to the pristine floor. I love you, Mikey. I... Despite her condition, I can't lie to her. It would be unfair on her to... On her end to have her hopes disrupted like that. I keep my mouth shut. A minute or so passes. Anyway, we should get going. There's no point going to school now. Why? What time is it? It's about midday. We missed the festival and if we turn up now, Monica's just gonna get mad at us. Come on, I'll take you home. We could talk, talk some more there. She gently nods following my lead. We exit the hospital and ride a bus back to her house. I decide to stay with Sayori in her house, just to make sure she's feeling better. We have at least a few hours together, but we spend that time talking and watching shows together. Her mother arrives first, thanking me for letting her know uh, nice. <laughs> of what happened. I tell her that it's no problem. She tells me that Sayori's father is on his way, and that I'm free to leave if I want to. After I'm sure she's safe, I leave her with her mother and head home. Entering the kitchen, I flick the light on and start to make myself a sandwich, cutting up a tomato. However, I start to wonder about Natsuki. I remember the time I spent with her, her here, our little scuffle over the cupcake icing. <laughs> Jeez. With that bruise, her nosebleed. What the hell happened to her? And who in their right mind would do that to her? Possible reasons for her injuries begin to circulate inside my head. Maybe she just fell over. I'm pretty sure all that didn't was not by a fall. 
She could have gotten into a fight with another classmate of ours. Or maybe... Her dad. No. Surely not. Maybe I'm just overreacting to the situation. It's been a rough day after all. But something she told me while we were reading manga together sticks in my head. I don't even... I don't even... Oh. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. I shiver at the thought. It's the only re real reason that I can come up with for Natsuki's terrible injuries. I also noticed that while I was distracted, I'd accidentally cut my finger open while slicing the tomato. Ah! Crap. I wrapped my finger in a paper towel, letting the few drops of blood soak into it. Throwing the paper towel in the trash, I think back to Natsuki. I decide that I'll ask her about her father next time I see her. Even if she assures me that I'm wrong, at least I'll know. I eat my sandwich and head upstairs to the room. Or my room, fuck. I collapse onto my bed, exhausted from the stress that, I, that the day had brought me. I drift into unconsciousness within minutes. Thank <sighs> you.